This, this fab lab is the first in the nation for K-12 and one of 42 in North America at all. The vision is to have a world-class engineering program and we're doing that by empowering the students to be the future challenge and future problem solvers that we so desperately need. You can't fund this kind of an engineering and fab lab program without the community and the larger community. But communicating with our local residents is so important because they have to know what their kids are doing. They have to know what their kids' choices are. And they have to support that and realize that what we're trying to do, like Mark said, is prepare our students for the life ahead, for the century that they're going to live in. Dale's the godfather. The I think his vision has been to get this, something like this, in the schools, and he has done it. This vision drove all of these things that happened from the EIE and the elementary is engineering is elementary in the elementary school through the gateway to technology in the middle school and now through the fab lab and our other engineering classes. The fab lab to me is, is the kind of the frosting on the cake of our engineering program. Without the engineering program, we wouldn't have the fab lab. There is a lot of high tech gear in this particular room and a lot of it came through collaboration and grants from 3M for example was a great partner. MAFE has been a great partner. There's also been some district work on this too. The district has made this a priority to make sure that our students have these skills that are going to be necessary to succeed. I was overwhelmed. I actually attended the May Gala and was stunned at the response and the acceptance and the support of the entire community, the parents. In seven minutes, it was a frenzy of giving. I just, I had never seen anything like it before. The big thing that we want to be able to do in terms of giving back is to have opportunities for the community to come in and see what's happening here and even participate in some of the classes. So we are having evening classes for community members where they can make and build almost anything. In order to be by charter a fab lab, you need to be open, open source, and open to the community so that anybody can come in and invent, create. We have entrepreneurs tonight. Our community class meets for three hours and it has 15 people in it and some of them are entrepreneurs with their ideas and so they're going to model it and, and hopefully there will come a business and maybe jobs from that as well. I know what it takes to provide jobs in our country and to, for me it's jobs motivated. Uh, scientists and engineers at 3M take technology, put it together into a product goes into a plant and now you have more jobs. I've been part of building a plant in North Dakota. I run a plant in Italy with a thousand employees. Uh, and so I know that that's where real jobs are created by engineers and scientists. My background is in a planning and design firm. And these pieces of software and these techniques for modeling are applicable right now, there, there isn't a pool of people that know how to operate the software, let alone the hardware. You know, this place creates jobs for me in more than just engineers and scientists coming through and going on. It can also give skills to people learning how to run this process that are in demand right now in industry. In fact, we met with 3M Fabrication Services and they can't get people who, to run this kind of equipment. Light manufacturing is looking, coming to this class to say, do you have students that can, could run this fabrication equipment? Print to the 3D printer or in this case, brought it into a different program. Tierney has Ipapura. taught how to make most okay. anything a century. She's taken the Fab Academy from Neil Gershenfeld, who founded the Fab Lab concept from MIT. And I come to the Fab Lab from a business background, not a teaching background. I went through the Fab Academy to understand how Fab Lab curriculum needs to be taught, but I'm really here to teach the teachers 
so that the teachers can then go out and teach the students. The advantage of having someone like Tierney Putnam working with us is that she's done this type of program before. She has the certification and the experience. She's able to identify what students need and is able to help them grow as much as they can. It's an eight. Okay, but if you're looking for an Adobe Illustrator. She's a really different teacher. She doesn't teach us all step by step how to do things. We kind of have to figure it out on our own, but she does answer the questions that we have and teach us how to work the machines. She kind of, she works with us. She doesn't just teach us. And now we are training another of our ninth grade science teachers who's going through the How to Make Most Anything class and he will take the Fab Academy this spring so we'll have two of them fully trained to teach. This is the Polycom. All of the fab labs around the globe, there are about 63 of them, are all linked via Polycom. If you have a question of any particular fab lab, if they're working on something that you know of and you don't have the answer to it, you can get on remotely and dial them up and ask them a question and they'll answer you. This is a digital fabrication lab and what that means is everything is designed on the computer. Then it's sent to pieces of equipment like you would to a printer to make the parts or make the whole thing that you've designed. They'll learn about two or three new pieces of software. Um, there are 40 pieces of software that we loaded on the computers. Um, many of them are free and open source. That's, that's by design so that anyone in the globe can download the software, learn how to use it, learn how to model, and then how to fabricate from that. Because there are 30 students and six pieces of equipment, Project management is right up there. That was week one, what they had to learn. Did you actually um, look up the measurements to do, or did you just guess? We put together all the measurements. When I was on team management, you would really see who was working and who wasn't, and you had to learn how to get them involved without just being a boss, trying to come alongside them and work with them and not tell them what to do. So that's really what I've been learning. Good to me, guys. Good work. This is the think tank. So this is where students um, will be working on their individual projects, but also as groups. Fabricating equipment over there, um, it, it looks like a typical vinyl cutter, but the Big Heads was project was also done on a vinyl cutter. So it's really a print cut solution. Um, then the ShopBot is a large CNC router. Um, they'll be doing full-scale furniture, the lasers, will cut wood, fabric, acrylic. So they're doing a project this week, a press fit box. So we're learning about cutting things and how the laser evaporates a little bit of the material as it cuts it. So we have to, um, we have to change the width of the cuts so that they will fit together right. The back of the room are two milling machines. Those are for milling. It's just a miniature version of the Big Shop Bot. So this side of the room is additive fabrication and they work on 3D scanning and 3D printing. See, there's some way you can like fix all this stuff, but... Oh, there we go. And they will be doing full body scans and then printing themselves as action figures. And right now, if you were, that, that would be pretty tough to differentiate between the tire and the What I listen for is the, oh my gosh, they literally, they don't know how things are created. And to know that they can do it themselves on very simple software, they're amazed. The light kind of goes on and... A lot and of them, sure the um, I don't think Otherwise, they thought personally that they were cut out for engineering, but they're finding that they can do anything. The first week of school, I came home and I was so excited. I talked to my dad and he was completely surprised because we tried so hard to get out of the engineering program, but I just love it. I talked about all the machines and everything, different things you could do with it and what I wanted to do. and. It, it was so surprising. I love it so much. It impresses me that, that the students are engaged and, and, and they're excited. And, and one boy was talking to me about his parts didn't fit and he didn't get it quite designed right and he knew what the problem was and he's measuring things. 
is he excited? And you know, I, my view all the way up from kindergarten or even preschool, when the kids get excited, they're learning. What I get is I get emails from parents. The kids come home and over, the, over dinner or whatever, they tell the parents how excited they are, what they learned today in school, or how cool is this piece of equipment, or this is my favorite class. I am gonna learn how to make a spinning wheel, and I'm so excited. So we're gonna learn how to use the shop bot behind me, but what we've actually done, I love using the laser cutter. It's really neat how it works and stuff. It's just completely new to me. I think I would take the next level of this class that they're gonna offer next year. I would, um, it's more of a, you already know how to do things, so you get to work on your own projects. And I think that would be really neat, just to see what you can make. It, it makes me feel really great what we're doing here. I hope we can share this with a number, because one school district doing what we're doing is not going to get enough scientists and engineers into our society. We need all school districts, or a lot of them, to do it, to do what we're doing. There are many other schools that can't even get the first step taken, and look what they have done in a year. It's going to be the thing that's going to be able to empower our students and it will spark their curiosity, fuel their creativity, and then instill a passion for innovation.